hello guys welcome to my channel this is the seventh tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to continue our discussion on data types and we're going to check out some of the options that are available to us in sql and in this tutorial we're just going to see the options that are available to us and we're not going to you know create tables and we're not going to insert data into tables uh, and you know check out the differences between data types we're just going to see what is in store and uh, in the coming tutorials we're going to you know do all of that so it's going to get easier for us to understand the differences between data types and the advantages that you know some data types hold over the other so Firstly, we are going to talk about uh, the options that we have for storing numbers in our tables. So you've got the big int data type that you use to store really, 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 really large numbers. And you know, the, then you've got the int data type that you uh, use to store reasonably large numbers, but not really large numbers. And I haven't included ranges for both these data types because I don't want to overwhelm you guys with the numbers and ranges. It's not important for you to, you know, memorize the actual ranges. You just need to know that if you're dealing with the, uh, you know, extremely large humongous values, then you use the big int data type. Otherwise, for all practical purposes, you can use the int data type. And you've got the small int data type in which uh, you store values that are between minus 32,768 and 32,767. So if you're sure that the values that you're going to store in, uh, you know, in, in the field are going to be between these two numbers and you can use a small in data type. Otherwise, if you've created a table that is going to hold 10 rows and you know that for nine rows, uh, the value for the field is going to be between the range that you see on the screen and for one row the value is going to be outside this range then it would make sense for you to declare the field as int instead of small int right so it's it's always better to plan in advance and uh, sort of know you know what values uh, you might have to store in your da database uh, you know at a future instance of time and then you've got the tiny int data type option in which you only store positive values between uh, 0 and 255 then you've got the decimal and the numeric uh, data types, right? And uh, these are used to store fractional values. And uh, for both these data types, you have to mention, you know, two things as arguments. So the first thing that you have to mention is the size of the, you know, value. And by that, I mean the display length. So if suppose you're storing 57.64, the value of m or the display length would be 4 because 57.64 in total has got four digits right and then the value for d which is the number of digits that you have after the decimal point would be 2 because we just have 0.64 so you know 64 makes two digits and then you've got the float data type and uh, with float it's not necessary for you to mention m or d as arguments in that case it takes default values and uh, we're, we're going to talk about default values later on and uh, for now just know that these are the three options that you have and then we have the date and time uh, data types so the first one for the first one that we're going to check out is the date time data type and uh, with this data type you store values in the format that you see on screen so if suppose you're storing 20th august 2013 11:42 pm and 15 seconds uh, you know in a field that has the date time uh, data type then you'll first uh, put in the year number which is 2013 then you'll put in 08 as uh, you know values for mm because uh, august is the eighth month of the year and then for day you're going to put 20 because it's 20th of august we're talking about and then you have to mention the time in the 24 hour format so 11 42 pm uh is what 23 42 and then 15 seconds that would make uh, you know 15 for sns and then you've got the date type uh, which is pretty much like the date time data type you know just minus the time part and you've got the time data type which is just the same as date time data type minus the date part and then you've also got uh, the year data type which is like really sweet and short and uh, this one holds uh, you know only year values so you know if you're going to put year values like 2005 and 2007 and 13 so you know you ha you can use this data type and uh, then we've got three options for characters too so the first one that we're going to check out is the uh, char data type and with char you have to specify the upper limit for for the field right so um, if suppose uh, you've mentioned 60 as the upper limit 
then uh, you cannot store values that have more than 60 characters in the field and at the same time you should know that char is a fixed length data type and what i mean by that is that uh, you know no matter how many characters you actually store in the field the memory that would be used to store those values would be the same as the memory that's required to store 60 characters right and for most database systems that would be 60 bytes so 60 bytes of memory would be occupied even if you're storing just 10 characters or 5 characters if you're just typing in hi or hello or something like that you know you're using 2 or 5 characters but the memory that would be utilized would be uh, of 60 characters so you're wasting memory and uh, with var char data type which is you know variable and data type you sort of get an advantage because you know if you're using five then you're using memory only for five so you're saving you know memory space for 55 characters so you know that's that's really an advantage and uh, then you've got the text data type which is uh, used to store large uh, amounts of data like blog entries or about me descriptions and you know stuff like that and then you've also got uh, the blob or the binary large object data type and uh, this one you use to store images or you know sh short video files and you know those kind of things so there are lots of other options that we have available in sql and you know i've just discussed few that we're going to deal with in the coming tutorials so i just want you guys to be a little familiar with the the you know with the terms at least right so if i type in blob somewhere or if i type in jar or varchar then you know you should know that we're talking about uh, you know uh, binary data types and character data types respectively so thank you so much for watching this tutorial in the coming tutorials i assure you that all of this is going to be crystal clear for us and uh, please subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already and uh, i'm going to see you soon